What's up, loved ones? My name is Johnny Scott Gramercy. This is Neighborhood Love Radio. I'm here with Jimmy Cabs of the of the Mary, very manic Jimmy Cab Show. Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me over, man. For sure. Uh, I'm going to start you off with the Mighty Riders. We're going to come back and shoot the shit a little bit. Thanks, loved ones. <laughs>
Hey, love doing this. I was in Mighty Riders. It was uh, repressed and re-released by the Love and Hate Records people up there in the Bay Area. But uh, next, what? Next up, I got for you, Curtis Mayfield. We cannot live on the surface of our earth any longer. There is now pollution in every natural mineral and material taken from the land. We have truly become a vast wasteland. And now underground, how will we deal with our society of discrimination among people? Near to hell, it's just as well become of our children underground.
Chestnut, originally out of Atlanta at the ATO. Do Better to the Young is the name of the tune from the Black Skin No Value EP, a very brief and powerful EP on the Vibration Vineyard label. Before that, we heard the, uh, the classic Underground by Curtis Mayfield from his Roots record, 1971, and started off the set with uh, Mighty Riders, Evil Vibrations. Uh, you probably heard... If you're not familiar with the song, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, bits and pieces used as a sample for the that De La Soul tune. Uh, that's, uh, what is it, Roller Skating Jam called Saturday. And that came to us via Love and Hate Records, who uh, repressed and released, re-released that record. Some Florida funk. By the Mighty Riders. I'm joined here by uh, Jimmy Cavs. What's going on, dude? Hey, how you doing? You know, I just got to tell you, those songs that you played... Uh not only mm-hmm. do they really hit the soul and the heart, but they really, really just put you in a good zone. <laughs> yeah, the soul. Soul music. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all about... When you listen to these titles, like the the culture and the words that they use, you know, they're all basically uh, ergonomic, you know? <laughs> you know, they, they transform me back to that period, man. Uh-huh. Which I don't want to date myself, but obviously... <laughs> Um, Jimmy Cabs, I should tell you, loved ones, Jimmy Cabs heads up the very manic Jimmy Cabs show. Uh, uh, we're both uh, studio mates um, right here at Skid Row Studios. His show comes on, uh, my show's on Sunday morning. His show comes on Sunday afternoon at uh, 1 o'clock. Yeah, 1 to yeah, 4. 1 to 4. And uh, basically a mixture of uh, 
metal, oh, meatheads, guests. It, it's completely banter. the op- it's completely the opposite of your show. Uh, your show, <laughs> you know, your show uh, gets the ladies in a good mood. <laughs> uh, my show scares away the ladies. Baby making music. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, but I love the I like the tunes that you play. I mean that's I get the roots like that as well. I mean, um, you know, I was young. It was all about you know Motorhead, Sabbath, and stuff like that. And then I progressed uh, thanks to uh, thanks to a couple dudes from uh, WCA West Coast Artists that flipped me a uh, a cool mixtape in beginning years of uh, junior high. That's when I found out about like Doctor No and and stuff like that. And then thanks to our mutual friend Scott Peterson who played me right. the. Uh, Cleanse the bacteria record and turn 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 me on this whole new branch, a whole new stuff in hardcore music, and uh, and uh, they all fucked up my life. So. I think it's interesting that even though we're playing different genres of music, we are still musically aware and we appreciate the music. Yes. Um, well, yeah, it's all music that's personal. You know? Absolutely. Um, it's you know a lot of a lot of electronic dance music and stuff. You know, I'm I'm not. I'm not trying to sto- throw stones, but it just seems a little bit too cerebral, and and there's nothing. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to harsh it, but uh, it's just not for me. There's no personal connection, you know. There's nothing that makes you want to move physically, move and uh, metal, hardcore, um, soul, funk, reggae, all this stuff, and literally makes you want to move, makes you want to dance, makes you want to jump, makes you want to get aggro, whatever. Well, if you really look at it, if you go back in history, it, it all starts with this type of music that you play on your show. Uh-huh. And, it, and it really goes from an emotional connection, even all the way to like a political connection. There's always a message. And aside from the message, it just really grasps your heart and your soul. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I invited Jimmy to uh, bring some music and play it on the show. Would you Yeah. I, you know what? I'm really excited. Are we going to start playing my block? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, tell us what you, tell us what you brought. You know what? I I, uh, I compiled a nice little uh, block of uh, heartbreak music. I'm going to start off with an artist called Ralphie Pagan. Mm-hmm. Familiar with Ralphie Pagan? No, no. Really? East LA classic. Uh, oh, cool. This is a song called I Never Thought You'd Leave Me. Uh-huh. And it just goes into some Peter Tosh, some Delphonics. Yes. You know what? Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's play the block. Okay. Well, we got a few seconds before... Uh before it's timed up. Uh, but tell, tell me about that that first artist, Peter. Ralphie Pagan. Ralphie, Ralphie. Pa- Ralphie Pagan is really, uh, especially if you grew up in like, you know, East LA, he's really an artist that is very well respected that at the time uh, made a connection with uh, Latinos. Okay, so the, yeah, this is all like the old, uh, the Midnighters and all that stuff. Oh yeah. And, it, yeah. and it's all, it's all really, it all really comes down to the universal uh, relationship of love mm-hmm. and heartache. Well, that, that era was pretty cool with me, especially like the East LA bands, because uh, um, cause, uh, for lack of a better term, like the, the black music that was going on back then, like it wasn't really being picked up by white kids, so, but the natural sort of... Uh, through neighborhoods and things like that, it was the Latinos that sort of took to it first. You know that you know? that whole genre is really interesting if you really look if you really get into the history of it. Mm. And um, all right, we're gonna play uh, some tunes from Jimmy Cabs, and we're gonna come back and rap about them a little bit later. Thanks, dude.
it up, baby. Catch you on the rebound. The rebound. You did me when writing me. I dropped me a postcard. Now you want to come back and make a new start. Later, baby. right that's right that yeah. was Brenton Wood with uh, Catchy on the Rebound that whole block there is a, a heartache block so. <laughs> all those songs really take you through the whole ritual of getting over that special love one <laughs> I like it man you brought some good songs and they fit well with the uh, with the uh, the motif cool man thank you yeah. very much for inviting me over it was very pleasurable to just go into the ritual of picking up yeah well I'm not done with you yet man but uh, I do need to say really fast this is uh, Neighborhood Love Radio we are the musical extension of neighborhood-love.com uh, if you check out neighborhood-love.com please check out uh, Else just got back from Art Basel out in um, Florida recently so he's got a lot of pics and updates there um, he also went uh, he took a little trip up to uh, San Francisco and checked out the uh, toy, the Japanese toy exhibit in the uh, airport up there so he's got pics and reviews there I think he's got a bunch more shit coming up uh, this week. Neighborhood-love.com. And uh, Jimmy Cabs, host, producer of the Manning Jimmy Cab Show. Um, so what, uh, what, um, is this something, that, the Roots music, is that something that stayed with you or is just something you kind of revisit from time to time? What else is, uh, is it just kind of a part of your daily or? This is really the foundation to, all of music, you know, this is really the beginning of what really the essence of music is because it really incorporates the emotion, the, the life experiences. And of mm -hmm. course, you venture off into like what my realm, which is more aggressive. But to me, I mean, in our, we were talking about this off the mic a little bit earlier, the people in our age group, the uh, <clears throat> 40s, <clears throat> um, Oyster rice. We, there's a lot of uh, just hanging out on the street. Hanging on the stoop, hanging out in the park, hanging out in the schoolyard, skating, you know, uh, hanging out at the Venice Boardwalk or hanging out wh wherever. A lot of hanging out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there was a there was a music involved, you know, boom boxes or somebody was playing music in the room, whatever. And it all, even though it's not similar in the roots, it's definitely um, mutual in that uh, it has a street level quality to it that you can identify with. And, uh, yeah. Would you agree that it really stamps that period that, that you cherished when you were growing up? And, oh, for sure. And all the characters that were in that period of life? You know? Yeah, for sure. It was uh, part of my growing up. Yeah. And uh, what's on the horizon here for you, uh, for the Manic Jimmy Cab Show? Well, you know, the very Manic Jimmy Cab Show, if you're into extreme aggressive music, we uh, we go out of our way being underground mm -hmm. every Sunday, one to four. I like your interviews, too. Um, and... Uh, one interview I liked that I saw only in print, I didn't hear it, was <laughs> an interview with Kirk Cameron at a, uh, at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Oh. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Wow, that's, that's awesome that you read that. <laughs> uh, you know, every year 
at uh, Hollywood Forever, they have the Johnny Ramone tribute. Mm-hmm. And that year, uh, Kirk Hammett was uh, a special guest, so I kind of weaseled my way into the PR section there. And mm-hmm. everyone was interviewing him, asking him about, you know, obviously Johnny Ramone. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to ask him about the death of Paul Bailoff when he was in Exodus, which is a taboo subject, and why he didn't, like, contribute money to help bury him. Mm-hmm. And For- he, he didn't find that very, uh, he, he, he which, really wasn't very they were, receptive to that. They were- Peers at one time there. Right, right. Contemporaries. You know. Yeah, you know, he was in a band called Exodus. He formed that yeah. band. And, Bonded uh, by blood, I remember. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he didn't really respond very well to my question. <laughs> and I had a, a six-foot, 280-pound gentleman uh, <laughs> fling me, literally, from the PR <laughs> section. So. I don't know where that cracks me. It's, well, it's just, I just sort of picture it <laughs> of you just like, this is my chance. <laughs> yeah, I can I, ask him anything. I, you, know? you know what? I'm, I'm very proud of that interview. It only lasted like 47 who, uh, seconds. On a, re- on a real on the real level, who are uh, some of the people that really... Uh, I mean, you get to interview people almost weekly, at least, I think. Uh, who are some ones that stand out as, as far as heroes, you know, or um, influencers? You know, I got to tell you, interviewing Rob Halford from Judas Priest stands out to me. I've heard many, many people say that he's just a, a straight-up... Good dude. Very straight yeah. up. Uh, you know, another one is uh, Nick Turner from Hawkwind. Mm-hmm. It's funny when you get to meet your uh, your rock idols and they turn out to be uh, genuine human beings. Mm-hmm. We're going to come back with just uh, another couple tunes. This is the new JBs with Fred Wesley, Breaking Bread. It's about eating with your family. <laughs> it is. Nice. I went back home about a month ago. To see my mama and my papa and the rest of the folks. When I got there, mom was sitting on the porch. Just a rocking and a humming like she always did. She said, sit down, son. I know what you like. I'm going to fry up some fucking bread tonight. I said, fry some bread. That's, That's what, what she said. said. Fry some bread. Yeah. The kind of bread she made was called poke okay bread. In an edge of grease on a wood stove. In a big old skillet. That's the way it's done. Yeah, yeah. Right make that yeah, whole thing. Yeah, man. Flour dough. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread. Then Papa come home. But when the sun went down. I said, what's happening, Pop? I said, Mom just rolling up some dough in there. We're going to fry some bread tonight. Yeah. Some whole cake bread. Yeah. I know you know what that is. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread with my papa. Breaking bread. Brother and my sister, cousin Amos, cousin Clarence, cousin Ruth, and that fine cousin Johnny May. Boy, yeah. she looks so good, I wish she was my cousin. You know she bad? She ain't my cousin. We smell the bread and we come to eat this good old stuff you call whole cake bread. Whole cake bread, yeah, whole yeah, cake bread. You know that stuff on top of the stove, right? And we was sobbing molasses. Yeah. Dripping butter all over the place and dropping crumbs and having a good time. You know we was. We get down. <laughs> yeah, man. Fight ain't like that. It's the last time. Yeah. Breaking Break bread with my mama. Breaking bread with my papa. Breaking bread. Breaking bread with my brother. Breaking bread with my sister. Breaking bread. Breaking bread with my cousin. Breaking bread with my brother. Breaking bread. Yeah. My buddy yeah. boy Shad. They was shut up yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Man, you know it's good. Like crackling bread. Look at that bread. Get that, get some of that grease all over your fingers. Yeah. Have the molasses running down the side of your mouth. Dripping on your chest. Yeah. Breaking bread with my mama. Breaking bread with my papa. Breaking bread. Breaking bread with my brother. Breaking bread with my sister. Breaking bread. Breaking bread with my cousin. Breaking bread with my buddies. Breaking bread. Hey man, you ready to know how to 
accept it. Ah, I know how to eat it. Believe that. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me get down on the I don't even want to see it with your other buddies in the album. Hey, I'm ah. going to get out of that song. You know, I know they got to remember where that comes from. I don't know, some of them might be the guy too here. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, you never get to hear from Okay, good. <laughs> Breaking bread with my mama, breaking bread with my papa, breaking bread. Breaking bread with my brother, breaking bread with my sister, breaking bread. Tricky is out of your life. Uh, this is going to be the last tune of the evening. Thank you so much, Love Dones. I'm going to come back right after this tune. I'm the speaker. It was all me. It was never all of the speakers. The bag shoot. I came back down and it's absolutely true. Truth from the trees that fell. This is how a man excelled and that's that. All you teach all that. Study the lesson. Bring, bring a gun, what you need, we can serve, want them 
False Idols record out last year, 2013, on his own False Idols label. Before that, we heard uh, Shafiq and Afrika, Dust and Kisses. It came out on the Plug Research record. And uh, before that, the new JBs, Fred Wesley, Breaking Bread. Jimmy Cabs, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Johnny, for having yeah, me. I wish we had a little more time. I'd like to uh, jibber jabber a little bit about uh, a thing or two, about a thing or two. But we got to clear and vacate for uh, Dark Mark. 